Well, I first met Kyler Black in Connecticut, where he was serving as my nephew's youth pastor. He has since laughed his way out of that position, but ministry is still his focus. He's eager to make you smile today. And here's the first one. Kyler still bears a striking resemblance, don't you agree, to Donny Osmond. Well, you can't because you haven't seen him yet. This folk I think it's about 15 years old. Do you remember when Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat came to Toronto? My children loved it. Okay, take a look at the man here. Back with us. <laughs> and they call it puppy love. <laughs> it is, Donnie. Oh. Oh, you must get it's, it all That's the time. frightening. I, I, I look at those pictures and I think, it's true. It's true. And I get it maybe once every week or two. You I'll be in the do. supermarket checkout line. And people are following too closely. Or... <laughs> I haven't asked for an autograph, but I've been asked, does anyone ever tell you you look like, and they never even need to finish the sentence. I have to tell you that... <laughs> At that event, there were grown women with Donnie dolls for him to sign. <laughs> well, so Kyler Black understand. action figures no doubt are coming down the line. Yes, yeah. I wonder if some watching remember this face from having been on this couch. I thought it was a year ago, 2007, you were here, Kyler. And some really cool things have been happening. 2008, you went full time with Inherit the Mirth. Yes. Yeah, um, which I'd started on the, um, uh, just uh, on the side as a, as a hobby back in 2003. I came up with the idea that uh, there ought to be more humor in the Christian marketplace. Um, and uh, I'd always uh, enjoyed, you know, uh, the far side type of, of humor, kind of off the wall sort of thing. And I thought, why isn't something, somebody doing something like the far side meets the Bible? And nobody really seemed to be tackling it or maybe figure out the right way to approach the interplay of, of faith and humor in that style. Um, but I thought I'd give it a shot. You sure did. You are the writer and the artist and uh, uh, the first book. What year was this one? That came out in 2006. Wow. What's that funny look on your faith? Uh, we're going to take a look at some of your far side ish kind of cartoons in just a moment. But you know, how many years did you work with youth as a full time position? Uh, growing up here in Canada, I uh, got involved with youth ministry as a counselor at uh, summer uh, church camps. And then I started part-time youth ministry at uh, an, uh, an Anglican church. I almost said Episcopal. I've been down in the States now for That's so long. That's what they call it. At the Anglican church, uh, an Anglican church in London, Ontario. And from there, took a full-time position at an Episcopal church down in Ridgefield, Connecticut, where oh, your my sister, brother and sister-in-law yeah. live. And so, you, I mean... You had so much experience with, uh, may, may I say, the challenge of communicating truth to youth uh, in a relevant way, in an engaging way. Uh, I'm sure that had an influence in what you've moved into full time. Well, because I don't think you can really do effective youth ministry without a sense of humor. In <laughs> fact, I think it's impossible. Survivor. Any of you out there who are youth ministers, you know that you can't, you just can't do youth ministry without a sense of humor. Uh, it mm -hmm. won't last. Um, and to me, that's almost the best evidence there is that God, uh, you know, has a sense of humor and gives it to us as a tool because cheerless youth ministers, forget it, they don't last very long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's time for a smile. I'm going to take us to uh, not the latest thing. Some of these we may have visited before. I, uh, some of them I don't definitely think any of these be. have been uh, shown on, on screen here, but oh, well, let's, this let's... is one from that previous book, the 2006 <laughs> book. Here's Noah. Um, it's getting a little tight here. Those snails are, I'm, we know they make it. We know they make <laughs> we know it. know they make it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is cute. You keep avoiding it, Noah, but sooner or later we need to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> you heard about the guy in the Netherlands who actually built. Yes, he built a life size scale. replica ark. Yes, and we, we know God didn't have any poor planning in terms of lodging those we know animals. it can be done <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the next one what are you some kind of bible thumper well there's bambi's friend down there <laughs> with the bible this is too cute west now, I, side, I don't know why churches haven't tried this one i know well you know they do it differently but west side church's new marketing strategy uh <clears throat> donuts after the service we <laughs> do joke about a certain popular chicken serving restaurant being vacated one day 
uh, should the rapture occur on a Sunday. No doubt, in yes. The after the, church period. The post church uh, house of worship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know. Um, <clears throat> You know that uh, wildlife is getting back in sync with God's purpose when they start flying in <laughs> Jesus fish formation. <laughs> the disciples had to admit that even at shadow puppets, Jesus was clearly the best. <laughs> you know, I thought, I just He's thought about how, how over the course of three years, here's Jesus with his disciples, they're a bunch of guys, how many nights they spent sitting around campfires and surely at one point they had the opportunity to compete at shadow puppets and I thought, well, who knows? I'll bet you Jesus would be the best. That's a good reminder that Jesus <laughs> was Jewish. Right, exactly. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others before ascending to heaven. Where, where? I can't see him. <laughs> Ascension deficit disorder. <laughs> well, you know, the application there is that not everyone saw Jesus ascend after his resurrection, but Revelation, I wrote it down, Revelation 1-7 says that when he returns to this earth, every eye will see him. What does that mean for you, Kyler, that coming day? I, um, boy, I, what does it mean for me? I, I, I mean, I, that's I, a sober reality. It is, uh, and, and I hope my, my heart is, is really and truly prepared for it. 